All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Come on in for, for the introduction of Doink the Clown. Again, I don't have all the high-tech material here. So this will well, be I'm, I'm, I'm a low-tech guy, so you're in good shape, Danny. <laughs> I'm lower tech than that. <laughs> so, no, it's, there's, there's, again, because I know there's been many different going to clowns. Yes, often imitated, but never duplicated. Now, were you the, actually did the second one. one? Second one. Matt Bourne, Bourne. was the first uh, going to clown. Okay. He had his problems. In and out of the ring, and uh, well, I think I think a lot of professional wrestlers, like like well, a, a lot of people, have their different you know, issues. But uh, he had an issue with the office, and he wound up getting terminated. And then uh, Vince called me, asked me if I wanted to, to pursue the job, and I said, "Well, never been a clown before. I've wrestled before, but I've never been a clown." Uh huh. So I uh, went up, and I had a, had a dark match, and. It went over good. I guess so, because he gave me a contract and a handful of plane tickets. <laughs> so yeah. sent me on my way. Were were you did you actually do the the mirror with him? You, you mean the, the double doink in, yeah, in number paper, nine at the paper? No, yeah. that's Steve Kern. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I thought. All right. Steve Kern did the WrestleMania nine, the double doink. Okay, okay. And then after that, then you probably did. three months, four months after that is when you the uh, change in. occurred, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I remember watching all of that as, as I, grew up, I grew up as a huge fan. Like they said, thank you for all the entertainment. What, you guys are awesome. What, sure. you put your, what you put your body through, you know, for us is amazing. Well, what do you mean? I mean, Dan's fine. Nothing ever happened to him. <laughs> well, okay. yeah. well Dan, Dan, Dan's never been in a real fight. I don't know if he did. Oh, no, no, never. Not at all. No, no. <laughs> this competition. All that yeah, stuff. Just, yeah. yeah. I've I've been in, 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 the, at the all you can eat buffets. It got tore tore up a little bit more than that. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> An interesting story. He probably doesn't know, but we're down in New Jersey somewhere, independent show, and I was on it. Dan was on the card. We're supposed to have matches, in the you know on our own, and the kids were so scared of him. The young kids, they wouldn't work. Yeah. Yeah. So the promoter came over and said, "Would you wrestle Dan Severn?" I go. Yeah, he goes. I go, but that's. I didn't think that's what you wanted. I thought you wanted to have Dan as the main event, me as a semi main event, and I thought that's what was going on. Because well, I can't get anybody to wrestle with Dan. <laughs> I go, hmm. I can see that. Yeah, go, but at the same we time, had a, we had a good match. But but, but, I, but a lot and then a lot of the locker rooms. I was always quiet because I'm not. I'm not there because I'm so new to that industry. I would walk in, and I always knew the analogy of shut up and listen. Sure. And so as I'm walking into all these different environments, kind of like going, I'm just being quiet. I'm sitting back to see. I'm I'm seeing all the different dynamics play out, kind of in front right. of me. But You're figuring like, it out. Yeah, you know, but it's kind of like going, just try to watch and learn as as I go right now. So I always, I, I met him in Japan. Yeah, which when uh, Bam before chemo. Bam Bam before chemo oh, okay. Leopold. Okay. That was what do you remember what the, the thing that show was for? That was that was the U UWFI? U, yeah, you Ultimate Japan fight, UJF. Okay. Ooh. You you were on the card, uh Paul Varlins, uh Don Fry, Becky Levy. Okay. And uh Bam Bam Fort Chemo, Leopoldo. And then I met you. That was that was the main event, wasn't it? Yeah. Bam, and, and, uh, yeah, it was the main event. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, you guys gave us some insight into that industry. Oh, you know, it's and he said, you know, if you guys are going to do that again, come out to Michigan and train with us, and we'll we'll smarten you up and help you out with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, we, it was a different ball game. Yeah, yeah. That, that was actually the meshing of two different worlds, right there. Oh. That uh, it was <laughs> not a good meshing. At, at, no, no. <laughs> but we all got along. We, you know, that's where I met him. Yeah. And, uh, you had the that, Michigan. You still have the Michigan sports camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Training yeah. stuff. Sure. Again, now that yeah, you, yeah. You, okay, you you see this big recent merger. You got the UFC you did and the it. WWE you now did. on. You did. You did. Yeah, that's same umbrella. Yeah, they're, 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 all, they're both uh, I, I mean, together. A designer, but, what you know? We're talking. What do you forecast? I mean, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Oh, okay. and yeah, if so, why? That's the biggest question. The why. Okay. I mean, like you said, it's two different worlds. Yeah, and I get that. 
Now, it's when you so put the two of them together, will they have more uh, viewership? Probably like, followers. well, viewership, will they have more advertising? Will they have more popularity? Will they have that? Yeah. But how is it going to work? Well, I'll, I'll share two different things here with you. You know, one with one with one aspect that I liked about it, going back in time when the UFC was first beginning, very small crowd. When you were there, small small house. When it started, yeah, small houses. Small and you houses. fight three times in the night. Yeah, well, but, but, no, <laughs> but let's, no, just talk about the the, the, the simply just the notoriety. Yeah, it was an unknown. When see when Ken went to WWF known at the time, uh, before almost one year before I did go there. Yeah, but Ken was just there as the world's most dangerous man. Right. I go into WWF and they give me Jim Cornette, and I'm coming out with the three different belts, and now I got Jim Cornette saying he's the NWA this, he's the UFC that, and people are like what's UFC? They, yeah. they, they 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 because they they it was a different audience. So again, but that's where they the crossovers that. The UFC got from all these professionals, people going, what's UFC? Now they start watching this UFC tour. Now there's been uh, several different athletes that have yeah. crossed over to, 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 to do both successfully. Right there. You look at Brock Lesnar yep. being able to hold title belts where um, the rules don't even apply to him anymore. I get that, that They go either, yeah. either or. And even the UFC, hey, hey, Brock, it's okay that you tested positive for this. We'll give you a pass. Because, don't worry about yeah, it. You, you're bringing lots of money. Yeah, I'm bringing lots of money. You know, th that is always the one demon, the greed. <laughs> when that when that serpent rears his head and there's garbage pails full of money, ah, that's okay, Danny. <laughs> Let that <go>. Really? <laughs> that's we, Dan's favorite. We know that. Money. Danny loves the money. Well, yeah, that's it. Who doesn't, that's, though? One, one, one of the things that, that uh, Don Pryble would, would razz me about all the time because I'm the guy that still wears the panty pack. Yeah, me too. Yeah. And, <laughs> but, but, still got one but, too. But, but, but Don will say, he goes, he goes, I never see that panty pack open that up. He says, Well, it does it, when it, I have to make a deposit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Fort Knox, right? It's, it's like Fort Knox. Well, it, it's like the Roach Motel, it checks in. We should be doing commercials there right there now. Go, right I know. Now. So, so earlier, Dan, you were saying how you're not going to see a lot of, uh, you know, like the wrestlers going to MMA. But do you think? I know Brock doesn't really count. But do you think he'll go back and fight again? Because they were kind of talking about it. Now oh, he's getting be, back into the ring. All right. If there's enough money. Would, would Brock go back again? Sure. He's still... Yeah, if yeah. You, yeah, we, if you got... I don't know how big is the check going to be. Yeah. yeah. When, but it could happen. Well, when, well, when you see... When you say... Actually, if you saw the checks that these young guys are getting... Like, for, forget forget the UFC even right now. Yeah. Think about what this... What the Paul brothers are doing. These are two brothers that have a boxing background. They're YouTubers. All right? So they have a, they've got a strong following. They're going to these former UFC competitors and they're offering them the best payday they've ever seen in their life N not just payday that payday is paydays we, 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 yeah. took, we just took your 10-year career and you're gonna make more in one night than you did in the last decade how do you say no yeah that, that's where getting, how do you say no yeah and, and, well and how do you not, say no plus, and you're not even getting hurt half as bad as you do in an mma fight well, well not their boxing. we all know that you know the MMA is no joke. If you want yeah. to try that out, you can't complain about getting your eyes split open, your well, nose broken, your arm that's broken. What, or you, that's what yeah, Diaz this can come. Yes. That's what Diaz that's was just sport. saying. Diaz was just saying, he's like, I, I, I'm, I'm not beat up. I'm not bleeding. I didn't get cut. He's like, I just. They were using, made, what, what were they wearing? Were they wearing like 10 ounce cups or yeah, was it, yeah, it was yeah. a 16 ounce cups? Yeah, yeah well, those like are six, soccer yeah, bombs. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah you're feel that. On. Like, yeah, you, it's from going used to getting punched with your fist, you know, well, the, the light wow. gloves that the MMA people wear, you know, yeah. I mean, to, to nothing. Yeah, so, which is a piece of leather over your knuckle, yeah. really. Yeah, it's not yeah, all it's, that yeah. much. Four, I think it's like a four, all of a four to five ounce glove, four and a half to five ounce glove. Yeah, it's small. It's almost like a bad glove. Then also, like you were saying earlier with the merger, I mean, already you see on ESPN, um, you'll get updates now. Like I'll have, because I have the notifications on ESPN. Yeah. Well, that's and, what I was saying. You yeah. On one side, you're going to get a lot more yeah. publicity, notoriety. Mm -hmm. It's going to expand on social media. It's going to, you're going to have all of that. Yep. But is it ultimately, is it a hot shot or is it going to be something that's going to be there for a long time? Yeah, we'll see. And then some, you know what I'm saying? No, I mean, no, no, how no. is this going to play out? Yeah. 
Yeah, because you never got updates about pay per views before, you know, from right. ESPN or anything like that. So I mean, like you said, that's more publicity. Or was this had to do with the lawsuit going on with with Vince and everything that the whole, you know, was... well, they're, they're going to enhance each other. I mean, because you look at you're going to have at, at various shows, you're going to have certain people from the MMA world that are going to be into uh, being at, at shows at professional shows, but then also. How is that going to work to the someone goes over there and also spills spills a, and a, a bag of popcorn or something like this? And the the, the MMA guy stands out again. I, I see a lot of carry over one yeah. way or the other taking yeah. place, but then I also see a lot of professional wrestlers that will be making cameos at the at yeah. UFC events. So you, you're just, gonna have a lot of it crossing over. How it's gonna play out, I can't predict. Yeah. Like the, I mean, was, you know, some people say good good publicity or bad publicity. No, all publicity good. is it's, good, you know. You that's know. right. People, yeah. didn't, people didn't forget about you at all. Yeah, don't worry about well, whether it. they hate you or love you. It's like, yeah, it doesn't least, matter. We're on the news today. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so how many, how many other? What was your other gimmicks before you got into Doink? What was some other? Big oh well, no, nah, me. I, I never paid my dues. I just walked in one day and went to Madison Square Garden. Are you kidding yeah. me? <laughs> I, I started out wrestling as Ray Apollo. Yeah. And then I had that character for quite a while. Then I became Sergeant Kruger for WCW. Okay. And I was with the late Ted Petty, who was a real good friend of mine. And uh, we were the, we were the South Africans for a while, which drew a lot of heat. Because back yeah. then there was a thing called apartheid. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, but if anyone has ever, has ever been to South Africa, you, right. you see that it's all white. Yeah. In South Africa. People but, don't understand that. But I, well, and I had to get out of the arena every night. Oh, because you... you oh, had... I was I was like a... portrayed a, pre a prejudiced guy. Yeah, big heat. And every night, you know, I, I was always against Kamala, S.D. Jones. Okay. Always a black guy. And let me tell you, those guys, those guys knew that if it wasn't for me and Teddy, we weren't drawing money because people came along to see us get our ass kicked. Yeah, you know? yeah, but those guys were the ones that helped us get out of the parking lots and helped us stay alive. If they want, they want to tear us apart. Oh, I can't, again, because I know that when I was actually working for for uh, you know WWF at, at the time, I mean they they, they had secure type of park and stuff yeah. like that. But I don't know if it's like that at all times. Well, but... you know, back then, I'm talking we were at WCW. That was in the '80s. It was a little different. Okay, and, you know. You know that thing, protect yourself at all times? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they mean it, Dan. <laughs> you protect yourself at all times. No, I could no, it's, I, I could. Uh, but, uh, you know, so I was several characters before I got, you know, to be the clown. So, yeah, yeah I didn't start off just going down to Madison Square Garden. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, what, well, that's, what, that's, what we have awesome. here right now, I mean, if, if people want to get in contact with you or something like that, uh what, do you, what are some of your social medias that, that, that we put up here right now? Just as like stolen you for, for a little bit of time here. Let me, well, uh, I'm not really big in the social yeah. media stuff. I'm know? a dinosaur. That's why I had to have young yeah, people. Yeah, I mean, I got, you know, people yeah, that yeah. get in touch with me in our little fraternity. Okay. You know, there's promoters and there's people that know who I am. And I kind of live a nice, quiet life. And I really like it. You know, I mean, most of my time when I'm home, I spend it with my grandkids and, you know, my, my kids and. I go fishing when I can. I got my my little grandson is seven. Pretty soon, he'll, if he keeps going the way he's going, he'll be coming out to the Michigan camp. You know, really? Would he be looking to pursue like amateur wrestling? Yeah, oh yeah, he's like yeah, okay. he's, yeah. No, that's uh, he's rolling. You know, he's rolling, and in the off season, he's rolling with the jujitsu, and he's in a wrestling club, and well, you know, his grandpa was a wrestler, so he wants to do it. You know, I said, well, when it's time, I said, I got a couple of friends I can. I don't know. I, I could point you in the right direction. I might be I able to help call it too. I mean, yeah. but but it's it's. I mean, talk about amateur for a moment. Amateur is yourself, a sport yeah. that yeah. 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 teaches you a lot of great character yeah. traits that carries yeah. over into, into life, life yeah. without a doubt. You, you you'll get humbled very quickly. You'll be respectful. You'll know what it means to sacrifice. You'll listen to your elders. It it it's a great great teacher. It's a great teacher. How much weight did you have to lose for your weight, your weight class? Oh, what, what, I, I was the guy with the rubber suit, with the oh. skip rope, in the shower with all the water on. And, okay, <laughs> just, just throw this now. How many different, okay, because wrestling falls right to Christmas, 
uh, Thanksgiving, New how, Year's. How many of these holidays that were were, were that smorgasbord is being laid out? Yeah. You, you got like I'm having an apple. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got a few ice cubes and, and an apple, and then that's uh, that's yeah. it. Yeah, because football season would end. Homecoming game was Thanksgiving, <clears throat> and then the following week, week, you know, Monday, you were in wrestling practice. Yeah, so you were nice and fat and chubby for football. We're gonna take care of that. Today. Yeah, oh, wow. yeah. So that's the change over because even even then, uh, sometimes the football season might even lap. Well, if if, if you were good, if you went to the states, yeah. then but the wrestling coach was tapping his foot on the ground. Hey. You better get in shape. I got one more. We're playing for the states. You know yeah, what yeah. you want me to do? Yeah, I, can't I don't do. want to hear that. You, you know, you're going to wrestle. The, the, the unique thing I had in high school was during football season. During football season, the head wrestling coach was the head football coach assistant coach. During the wrestling season, the head football coach was the assistant as a coach. Yeah. So they they had a deal. They understood. Oh, when, when when I was there, the line coach was the head wrestling coach. <laughs> <laughs> so same, same, same. when you left, when you left football, I said, like, oh, "God, I got rid of this guy." Oh, that's good. Oh, there he is. <laughs> He's the boss. That was the next day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is bad. But that was actually, I mean, but having that kind of a thing right there, the coaches they they know you that much, yeah. that much better. So I mean, that. some of the stuff that we did when we were kids, if you did that today, you'd go to jail. Yeah, you know, yeah. you can't do that no more. There. I probably should be doing this, say this publicly right now, you know, but but they're at some point around that 1975, 1976 yeah. time period, a big plastic cow ended up in the intersection of Montrose Hill McCloy. I can't oh, believe that. And uh, they came out of someone's vehicle. I, I I don't know who those those criminals were at the time, but uh, hopefully that the time ha lapse has. Uh, Hey, you, mean, yeah. you mean the statue of limitations yeah, yeah, yeah. has expired? Yeah. On this one. <laughs> well, so, just what are your thoughts on that uh, dark side of the ring show? You ever you ever seen that? I, I've seen some of them. You know, I I think it's done professionally. Um, I know that they have time constraints. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of things I guess they, they don't to, get to they don't get to cover. Yeah, they try to because I knew so that, many of the guys. Like Forty five minutes or something. Yeah, I mean, if it's an hour long show, you know they got forty minutes to get yeah. what they're going to get. And how do you cover a guy's career in forty minutes? Man, I don't know because they, they just no, did this the most recent season. I think they did one on Doink Matt Bourne. Yeah, and uh, yeah, actually, I just watched that not too long ago. It's pretty interesting. Did you did you happen to see that one? I did. Yeah, I did. It was um, pretty accurate. I mean, it was yeah. you know, like I said, that you can't cover a guy's life in oh, forty no. minutes. But no. was it? Basically, you know, give the the fans or the people that are watching it uh, an insight about what he his life was and what he really did. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. pretty close. Yeah, it's crazy. It's nuts. You, and then, I mean, do you think that his that one wife actually tried to kill him, or you think he actually just finally overdosed? No, I I, I don't think she tried to kill him. Yeah, I don't. I don't think so. Either. I mean, Matt had his demons. Yeah, you know, and I never I never talk bad about anyone who passed, but. He had his demons. He had his problems, I and I good. think they reared their ugly head for the last time. Well, one, yeah. one of the things, one of the things, that, one of the things that we've talked about on the podcast before is that we talk about the heavy uh, deaths that take place in yeah. the world of professional wrestling mm -hmm. at young, at much younger ages. Yeah, and a lot of it, again, what I, I put my two cents in there's just because of all the bumping that takes place because yeah. it's a show. It's a very physical, entertaining show yeah. that. Your body being picked up and slammed over and over. Yeah, I mean, no matter what you do, you can't fake gravity. Yeah. No. Nope. You know, gravity wins. And the travel that we used to do back then. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I mean, you'd go out 22 days in a row, come home for three, go back out for four, go and back wrestle, out for 22. And you would wrestle multiple times in one evening, right? Like, oh, every day, every Sunday yeah. was a yeah. double. Yeah. Yeah. That's you know, crazy. I mean, the travel, I mean, you know, you'd fly the time zones, the changes. It would just literally beat the hell out of you. What's the like? Let's and say then, what's then like the probably, farthest you had, to, you had to have had those mornings where as you're waking up, as you're rubbing the sleep out of your eyes, just like, yeah, yeah, you're looking like going, "Where am I? Where am I? At? I've done and, that. And what is? Where am I at today? What are we? Yeah, I mean, I, I already. Who are you working with tonight? I walked out of my hotel room because I didn't know where I was, and I looked. I went, "Oh, we're in Detroit. That's cool," because <laughs> I had no idea 
you know, you, you get wrapped up. And like he said, you're doing this every day, every day, every day. And you go and go and go in the time zones. And then, then you get to a TV day where you got to be there before 12 and you might not get out of the building till midnight because you're doing interviews you're doing whatever promos. And then the next day is another city and it's TV, you know, three TVs back to back. And then you get out of the last TV and you're going overseas. You know, so then when you get to overseas, you're like the dish rag, you know what I mean? Totally different time zone. And they go, uh, you ready to wrestle Dan? No, I don't <laughs> want to take him out, buy him a dinner. Let's go. I want to sit down and relax. I don't want, I don't want to fight nobody. Yeah, pillow right? talk at this point. Actually. Yeah, I mean, I don't want nothing to do with anybody right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's the way it is. That's I mean, the life. that's the life. Back then, you know, they ran the guys a lot harder than they do today because they realized it's it's going to be fatal in the end. And then because you can't sleep or you're wide awake, so what do you do? You take something to go to sleep. Then you can't get up, so you take something to wake up. Then you, you roll your ankle the night before, so you take something to get for the pain, right? Yep. So now before you know it, you got three different things going in and out of your body every day. And now, now you're trying to, yeah. get, trying to get a workout. Yeah, you got to go to the gym and train yeah, a little bit. Because, because you know, soft, flabby people don't usually sell a whole lot of tickets. So no, no. You, you got get to get, 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 get on some other gear. So, what, what, you know, where do you want you, know, you want to know why so many of the guys passed at such an early age? Well, yeah, that's part yeah. of it. You know, it's the travel, the training. Yep. The wrestling, you know, and you got to remember, you know, your, your eating schedule is not exactly normal now. No, I mean, look, you just Bray, Bray Wyatt just passed away a few days ago. Yes. And I mean, that yeah, that's Mike many. Rotunda's son. Yeah, yeah, yeah Rotunda. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, Mike's Mike's yeah, a real IRS, good guy. right? Freaking, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he yeah, he's a great yeah, guy. He's back east, super it's talented Syracuse. family, super talented family. Like you know, yeah, oh, the, that that run they did with the Wyatt family yeah. was amazing. What they did that was, that was I mean, oh, Blackjack Mulligan, yeah, Barry yeah. Windham, yeah, all of those. Guys, yeah, I mean, every one of those cats was a, yeah, so whoop. talented. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Really. No, but it's it's unfortunate. Yeah, condolences to all yeah. their family and. Yeah, it sucks. yeah, it's a shame. <laughs> and then too, it just and you see all these now all these incredibly healthy athletes just collapsing. Like I saw with LeBron James kid the other like few months back, and you know mm -hmm. just, just won so, all the one. And, and that guy, you know, he never leaves. He's in the same court every day. The kid. Yeah, yeah. Suppose he was traveling and doing our schedule. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah no. I know, right? And look, yeah, it's and that's crazy. just the guy that you know is trained to play the you know same building every day. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's insane. It's insane what's going on. Well, I, I don't want to still too much more time here, real quick, but I uh, really appreciate you coming know, in here. Anytime. Anytime. Took some time. Yeah, thank like you so said, much. It's just yeah. Love to have you on. And, yes, and thank you. Thanks, thanks for having me. Love to have you yes. yet again. It's always good to see you, my friend. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Care, man. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Where did your athletic career start from? So I started, um, I started pro wrestling school when I was 13. Um, that was, yeah, that was crazy, right? Back then, I guess, like, wow. well, it wasn't a so I think the reason why it was really positive environment for me was because, um, I got my parents' permission, obviously. Well, yeah, they yeah. had to sign, yeah. But back in 2002, there was a wrestling school in Schenectady, it's like 20 minutes from here, it's not there anymore, but 24 7 wrestling, it was called. But it was a very good family uh, like environment, like, they all looked out for each other. And like they want that's, to make sure you weren't hurt. Well, yeah. that, that's <laughs> yeah. good because yeah. you've, you've learned that right. the professional industry yes. is a very cut it is. industry. Yes. So, so I was very. You, yes. so <laughs> what? you went from you from a, went from a very coddle. Yes. Type yes. Of a a little, to... Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then I I know after like I so I trained there um, for like a year or two and then I branched out to, you know indie shows and that's how I got my experience like just traveling around the road which that was crazy at the time because I, I didn't have a car yet because I was like 15 16 my mom was driving me to the shows <laughs> so I started really young you never mom, think about mom, that yeah mom's the the best trip, back. yeah the road trip she was like my manager kind of like you know just taking me to the shows and like but at the time too I was like very independent I wanted a job and I wanted to pay for my you know the gas and the tolls and everything like I didn't want to rely on my parents yeah so. yeah yeah I worked, you know, it's a borrow court job. And then I paid for my first set of gear, you know, as it added up. And like, that was just like, from there on, I just, you know, I, that was my dream since I was a kid to be in like wrestler. So, yeah. What, what got you into, what got you into wrestling? What made you want so, to pursue that? So, obviously, I was going to say, yeah, 
when I was three years old, I sat in front of the couch and I watched um, Hulk Hogan and Ultimate Warrior and those guys growing up. So I just was all, like always loved wrestling, like the like the bigger than life, you know, larger than life superheroes so I, watching on I, TV. I can't see and... Kayla run around in a pair of like <laughs> yeah. the underoos or something like that. Going, <laughs> what do you want to do? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, growing up, I was definitely a Hulkamaniac, but like as I got older, I liked you know China was one of the, my inspirations that really yeah, yeah. No, she was she, so again for that, that, that whole, yeah. with Xbox and yes yep. And, yep and DX yeah. and all that and she was a trendsetter like back then it was different for women to like be in that role yeah like man's world kind of thing and she held her own and that's why I always loved like watching her and stuff <laughs> yeah Aww. I mean so what uh, well yeah. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, how do you but, but how does the trip, yeah, yeah. how do you get so, more and more known? From, and what 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 helped you to uh to get around to more and more organizers, organizations so, um, or what? yeah, so uh, back then it was a little tough because like social media wasn't around. Exactly. And so like the way I would try to like as um the internet was good because I had my own website and then I would trade like VHS tapes back then to try and get my word out. But then, the, you know, the internet, there was places that, you know, you could wrestle independent promotions out of state. So that's kind of how I networked and some, stuff. Some yeah. of you young people <laughs> might want to Google what, what a VHS tape is. Yeah, right. The yeah. predecessor to all this yes. internet. Yeah. <laughs> and then DVDs eventually. And then um, I still have them, actually. I kept everything on my VHS tapes and DVDs. Well, that's because yeah. Blockbuster Video was big. Yes, with, it was with, big. With that. Kind of yeah. So is yeah. it now? Yeah. Well, <laughs> another then, another um, ancient name, Blockbuster. Blockbuster. I know. I miss all that. I miss that stuff. But uh, yeah. Then I so I did that for six, seven years, and I traveled, and then unfortunately I got you know things happened. I got a concussion, really bad, severe concussion. Okay. Yeah. God, but, but that's what they always try to bring up about professors. Yeah. People yeah. look at it like it's a show. Right. But it's but a it, show, but a lot of things can happen. Yes. Yes. I because I, I always yeah. tell people I, I've had a cage fighting career, I've had a professional career. Yeah. I've been hurt far worse in my professional right, career. Right, right. Than I ever have been in my cage fighting career. And that's not, yeah. That's not doesn't shock me because like, you know, things can happen because you're in there, you're trying to have a, a match of entertain the fans and stuff. But how, how did you get happened. your how did you get your concussion? I, uh, it was one of those where, uh, <laughs> it was no one's fault, but like, you know, I, when you go to land and you're supposed to put your hand up and I didn't, it, you know, it was like one of those things and I landed my head face, you know, face first on the mat. And I remember I blacked out and then it was like over after that, I'm like me. So, and my mom was there and she had to like rush me. I was still in my gear and she helped me still in my gear to go to the ER after the show. And that, that and, might've been something kind of like, oh, it's special there for the, right. the, the hospital. So I was like, oh, right. you're, cause you're still in gear. Right. Like They're like, what the heck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they did actually like, where are you coming from? Like they don't probably from people that watch pro wrestling, they don't understand. So they were like, what the heck? But yeah, that was, that was a scary time. Like I, I wanted to always go back, but I don't know if you ever had concussion or no one, like the vertigo, like the side effects from it that you get oh, yeah. and you feel like you're like on a roller coaster and your equilibrium is off. So when up. I would try to go back in the ring, it, you know, I would get dizzy and like can't sit, sit up or like stand straight. So that was that was like the setback. <laughs> yeah. Wow, 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 wow. But the but the feel good story is I took a long time off. I did a lot during that time off, but I took 14 years off. And I did, you know, 14 years. Okay. So wow, that's uh to, to yeah, start so young. Right, right. And then to get, okay, but, get back into it. What is what you do during that time frame? So I uh, I did the adult thing. I got I got a house. I had a career. I started my career at the New York State Attorney General's office. So like I try to make, you know. The best of like my life and my situation, even though I, I didn't want to quit. So I did. But it was that, always yeah. obviously it had to be always in the back of your mind. Yes, yeah, always. Okay, yeah. Well, what, like, still a fan. What <laughs> what what put you over the edge there to to do it again? So um, not to make a lot make a long story short, stuff happened in my personal life which led me to say, okay, well, what's the one thing that always made me happy and that was wrestling? I said, let's give it a let's give it another shot. You know, like what's the worst 14 years? And I think that's what, if you come back from something from so long, the fear sets in. Like, am I still, can I still do this? Or can you know, you get in your head about it. But I got back into the ring. Um, 
my Chip Stetson was my trainer since I was a teenager and he still wrestles. So he actually just retired. He had like 27 years wow. <laughs> in the wrestling business. So that was a full circle. Like he has a ring, um, not like a backyard, like yeah. how backyard wrestling is, but he has a ring in his backyard. That's like a professional, you know, like ring and everything. He sets it up in the summertime when it's like, the weather's nice, but I got to get the ring rust off with Chip. And I got, I came back the summer of 2021 and then it's been like crazy, awesome, like super, like amazing opportunities that they have now that they didn't really have back then, you know, like, so that I've been blessed and like happy that things have been going really great. <laughs> well, do you, do you work predominantly as a face, baby face? or I was going to say, yeah, face, but I would like to do more heel stuff because obviously you can tell I, I smile a lot. So it's, yeah. So <laughs> it will be a little, yeah. I, I was going to say, how do you do heel? Yeah. yeah you, unless you, you do like right. more of a sinister shit. Yeah. I'm, like you start, you next start laughing. But then you're going to, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. I'm I not might... laughing when you folks, I'm laughing at you. I might, I might end up doing that if I ever. I mean, you have to do both, you know, to be a well-around, you know, worker. But I did have to be, I had to be heel in front of 20,000 people at my AEW debut against Thunder Rosa. It's just like, you got to be the bad guy tonight. <laughs> Can you do it? I'm like, I got to do it. And I, I remember I was trying not to smile and I, I, I try to do the best I could, you know? <laughs> yeah. oh, you know? I saw that match. Yeah. yeah. That was good. What did you say? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I saw that match. Oh, you did! Awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was good. You did a good job. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, I appreciate oh, it. Yeah, that working. was that was um, surreal. We were the opening match, yep. and like walking into AEW. Of course, like I I mentioned about Sting was one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like seeing Sting yeah. there. People I grew up like idolizing, and like just like as a fan, and like I was trying to like keep. I remember like Thunder Rosa took me. She's like, "All right, you gotta." She's like, I know you're excited, but you got to like stay focused. Like you got to get ready for the match. And she's like, are you good? <laughs> Cause like Dustin Rhodes was our, uh, our agent for the match. So that was a big, that was a huge opportunity. And Dustin's awesome. I love Dustin. <laughs> yeah, so, wow. Great family. So you actually are the first person that was on SmackDown and Rampage in the same night. Yes. I know. Isn't that crazy? Like just hearing like, yeah, just... that was surreal. So like that yeah, was that all. Play-up. So February of 2022, I remember, because you know, as a free agent, you're extra, so yeah. you take an opportunity whenever you can, and I try to get my name out there, and um, what was it, Wednesday, they taped Rampage, and you don't know what you're going to do till you get there, because they could say, hey, we want you in a match on Dark, or Dark Match, or hey, we want you on TV, or you don't, you don't know, because they make, so I remember Serena Deeb came up to me, she's like, hey, you're in my match tonight for the professor's five minute challenge i'm like i am it was on di- or, uh, rampage so we had that match it was in bridgeport connecticut and then in the back of my mind i remember i'm still i'm booked for wwe but i don't know what i'm gonna do on smackdown and that was in hershey pennsylvania and then i remember i got to hershey pennsylvania they came up to me they're like you're gonna do um a, a kiss cam or something like something random like right i'm like hey it's still tv time right so i'm like oh and that was my my first time at wwe too and then so that was when i did the still i remember smackdown aired live at eight they did the kiss cam and then uh at 10 o'clock was rampage and they showed my matchups and then i remember my phone blowing up like <laughs> well again I, I, that's, yeah. what, that's the whole step that when the, when the viewers see <laughs> yeah. this segment airs up at right. that <laughs> understand the versatility that one has to have. Professionalism is just one of those industries that yeah. things happen. Yeah. Things happen where opportunities will present. Sometimes people no show. People get yeah. hurt. Rings fall right. fall apart. I mean, and that's the one thing that I've always really loved about professionalism yeah. is when something goes wrong, yep. how these athletes have to recover like yeah they have to cover the yeah exactly re- <laughs> yeah you're hurt right right and we, you... we're, we're supposed to put in this right. much time stuff like yeah. that how do you carry the match right, how do you, right, do this? Right, I mean, it's... Right. you gotta think on your feet yeah. yes <laughs> that's one like, thing that that improv. Uh, if you <laughs> yeah. when if, I, I i would recommend just anyone to take a couple of years of professional training yeah. and, and just even start to work on, on, on a, a small circuit just to experience yes. some of this that we're talking about yeah. right now because yeah. it will prepare you for life like yeah. nothing else. It will teach you to yeah, work with good people, right. bad people, yeah, yes. you know, on top Everything. of that. Yeah. Cause it's, a, I'm sure you had to have had yes. spent, <laughs> spent, a few, spent yes. a few times. Yes. 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 I, so Tony has heard me say this before I yeah. go that if you're going to go into business, mm-hmm. take 
a couple of years of professional wrestling, 101, 102, right. th just those classes, right. it will prepare it you will. for the absolute worst in the yeah. industry. Because like you said, a lot of it is like the physicality part, but a lot of it is the business side of it too, which yeah. you got to understand, like, you know, how, how, how to network, how people, like, mm -hmm. you know, people skills and stuff. So yeah, the people, yeah. Again, so the network and stuff yep. like that, that was one thing that, yeah. I did not want. To, <laughs> yeah. I did not want right. to, to talk to you. Right. Right. I just right. wanted to go out and compete, right. my thing, right. and be done. Yeah. And, but no, and there's so much more yeah. to it now. Yes. So yes. you have to be. Now Tony knows it's hard to get me to fat my <laughs> I know, and like it's like your brand is like the thing now, like you're because of social media. So it's like the more you can promote, you know, yourself yeah. or network, and <laughs> yeah, you'd be surprised what companies will come out of Woodwork right. or what products that they want to mesh with you because right. of that. I can see like. Everybody want to come with you because you got you got a lot of you got a lot of this energy okay, something come out yeah. so good yeah. like, everybody yeah you have to stay over here because you want to jump my yeah. board but no it's just yeah. that that and uh, but anything that with uh but but keep with nat natural foods yeah. I think yeah. I can see that that going with you there as well yeah oh, a lot of opportunities you. with a lot of those uh those kind of products I've, yeah definitely. <laughs> Yeah, my thing is I always come off like I want to come off as genuine as possible because like everyone watching at home, like I remember being the fan watching it. So like, you know, right away when people are phony or like, you know, like especially with social media, it can come off as like kind of fake, I guess. Or So I always like people tell me it's so nice that you post positive things on social media when there could be a lot of negative stuff. So. Well, the, our country and the world is. Such it is. Yeah, we were just right talking. Now. Yeah, <laughs> just, we were just rather, talking about that. Trying yeah. to see positively more than, than ever. It is. Yeah, it's important. No, so I mean, what's I, I guess what 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 I mean what is really what should be your next best big thing that's coming up for you? Well, knock on wood, I'd love to. <laughs> hopefully, like everyone's dream is to be signed by you know like WWE would be my dream come true. But um, until then, I've been keeping busy. I have um, shows coming up next month uh, in uh, Utica or no Westmoreland, the Mortal Championship Wrestling. I'm the women's champ there, so that's coming there you up. Go. <laughs> I'm excited for that. Coming back to do a title defense. Yes. yes yep. Okay. <laughs> And then uh, also, it hasn't been announced yet, but I'll, I'll mention it here. Pre Premier Streaming Network is having a show, wrestling showcase in New Jersey next month that I'll be on that as well. So that's exciting. <laughs> well, but the nice oh, yeah. part about it, again, because of the internet, yeah. the streaming ability, the <laughs> yeah. fact that that uh, these shows could be held almost anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And that, yet they could Stream, be streamed yeah. and, and uh, you know, to any, right. any, any place in, in the world. Right, and that's it. And that's awesome that they have that now. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, I, sure. actually, I, I think that you can, I don't know if they would have done it. I well, actually I think yeah. during the COVID period of time they 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 did a little bit of this, but yeah. you can have professionals match take it in a in a whole green a, oh, a green screen yeah. type room. Yeah. And towards like there's only just those couple wrestlers that <laughs> right, are in there doing right, the match, but right. then you can impose the whole make crowd it look like yeah, it. make yeah. it look like they're yeah in front of thousands of fans or yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> yeah. even during that, that one segment there of, of, when you saw it wrong, you see all these cardboard people. Yeah, I like, remember there'd be like a real person here. Yeah, there'd be a bunch of cardboard. Yeah, or COVID, I felt bad. They had like TV screens of everything. Yeah, it's yeah. Of all these faces. That could be so tough. Because yeah. wrestling Cause, in front of nobody, it's like well, you know. It is tough because yeah. you're used to feeding off right. that energy, yep. whether pro, yep. positive or negative. Yes. Still, you want that it's energy. Like yeah, that's the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's hard without too. that, it's like it's not yeah. <laughs> then here the silent the silence of the arena. You yeah, could hear, that, you, could, you could hear the wrestlers talking sometimes. Right, yeah. That you weren't supposed to hear. I'm sure, they probably had to like lower the value. Really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> a few different things right there. Yeah. So, well, I mean, well, who, who, I know you said back in the day you love Hulk and China. So, who do you, who do you like now? That's your bell. Like now? Oh my yeah, gosh. Who, who um, like, who, who, like, I was going like, to say, like, every, like, Lynch, um, Charlotte Flair. Yeah. Yeah, Bianca, uh, Bianca Belair, Be uh, uh, Becky Lynch is great. Charlotte, like all those, like I love how women's wrestling came so far now. Like yeah. it's, everybody is like great to watch. <laughs> yeah, this, that, that whole and that, yeah, strides. That yeah. NXT group that came up all together. Yep. Was, was a great movement for the women's division yeah i feel like uh bailey and i are very similar so like she's really fun to watch too like as yeah, i watched I can, her yeah. career <laughs> yeah, that's awesome yeah i can see that the we have like the same it. vibe yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, definitely and we grew up you know like she hardy boys were one of my favorites too growing up like matt and jeff yeah, <laughs> the awesome. attitude era yeah yeah but, okay, but the hardy boys yeah talk about the risks oh my god oh, I know. Oh, was oh. To leaps of faith yes that's what yeah i remember they had like a dvd called that or book or something oh, did they really <laughs> yeah leaps oh. of, yeah. yeah leap of faith yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep and uh 
Yeah. And it's surreal too, like being backstage at AEW and there's Matt and Jeff. And it's yeah, like they know yeah. when they see me, they're like, there's Tangla. Yeah. <laughs> and I try to, you know, keep it, you know, because at the end of the day, <laughs> now I'm like a wrestler. I got to remember that, but yep, also yep. I'm still, we're all still fans. We're still you know? fans. Well, that's, that's, that's what it treats us in the first place. Yeah, oh, that's so. right. Well, that's a, a lot of people that's lose that. I feel when I get to go, when I go to these events with Dan and Don. And I know, Dan, yeah. I know, I, I'm around, I go and <laughs> I see, I see all these other people Aww. and I'm like, oh man. Oh, you got, it is. But, that, but, I know. but that's what I like about it because he'll come up yeah. with different questions than, than what I'll ever come yeah, up with. Yeah, so yeah, it's cool. great that he, he does that. So it's like. <laughs> no, this is great. Yeah. What What's your finishing move or signature? It's Sparks Will Fly, because my wrestler oh. name is Kayla Sparks. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Sparks Will Fly. No, sparks Will Fly, and it's a trail it. DDT off the top rope. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Yeah, yeah thank you, know, you. Yeah, you know we should, okay, I get yeah. this. Just get from here <laughs> yeah. now. Is, yeah, yeah. She should get like a... Uh, a grinder and you yeah. get some type of piece of metal something like that work. Oh yeah, spark. And, and, and yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. flying at that yeah. point time to where it's like you know you got the guard right. Yeah. Like you, yeah. 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 you got that smile. Yeah, yeah. You just go sparks. Yeah, sparks. Right. <laughs> yeah, I love that. <laughs> oh goodness. I, I love it. Throw me a plug. That's all I'm looking for. Yeah. Throw me a plug. All right. I learned um, that from the beast. <laughs> I know. Yes. Thank you so much, Dan, for the no, no. All, again, yes, yes, well, just yes. oh, love, love having you on. Unless you have any questions, where I I don't want. Still, you wait oh, from, no, from your table and stuff like that. But yeah. Yeah, if there's something else comes up, I mean, we're here for tonight and tomorrow's like Vamanos off to the next. I know. So my, yeah, tonight's gonna be fun. The induction ceremony and all that. I'm excited for that. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it's such an honor to like meet you, Dan, and an honor to meet you as well. And like, thank you oh, for having same. me on here. And oh, same if here. you guys want to follow me, Kayla Sparks two four seven is my social media. Okay. <laughs> yep. I, I you should say, yeah. yep. We'll follow no, you. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and then too, shit, we like to yeah. meet in the future, you know, get you back on the show, do a full. Yeah, yeah definitely. Instead, yeah. Of, instead of me, you can, road, you can you can talk to Don. I love that. Okay. Yeah, awesome. That'd be awesome. Yeah, definitely would love to come back. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Aww. Well, Kayla Sparks, yes. thank, you. Yes. thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Best thank of luck so for much. I everything it. in the future. Thank you, so much. <laughs> thank you guys. Stay, and stay safe, especially yeah, in that that sport. Yeah, it's knock on wood. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. That was fun. People know that I'm at the International Professionals in Hall of Fame and that there's a whole cast of different characters that are going to be here today. And we're just trying to steal a couple minutes from a few different people. We've got the, the legendary Tony Atlas here in the house here right now that that uh, professional wrestling extraordinaire. Great to see you. Well, again, we'll just, I'll, I'll just try yeah, to get in there. Great to see you. Yeah, right. see you. Yeah. But yeah, no, just, we're just trying to yeah, want to bring people yeah. to to know a little bit more about you, too. Again, do we have some questions you want to ask? Well, again, you, you, you'll like the name of the, of the podcast. The podcast name is called Toxic Masculinity because in today's crazy world of political correctness, uh, it's where you have all these L B G T Q R. I I don't know the initials to them because right. I, I did not pay attention to to that. But you got people that that have. Trying to bring attention to this, that, no, that. I just say that no, Don Fry and I are, are two crusty old farts that simply just tell the truth in a very blunt type of way. And people ha ha have the right that they can either watch us or not. That's right. That's true. I go, you have control. It's like you have to, you know, yeah, you can always turn it off yeah. or change the channel. Exactly. Yeah. So, what question you got from a young man? I would love to know. <laughs> what what made you want to get into the professional wrestling career? Well, believe it or not, when I started off my career, I started off uh, what we used to call it in old day as a pug. I was a boxer. So okay. I started boxing for what they called the Police Athletic League uh, when I was about uh, eight years old. And I did that up until my teenage year. And I always be interested in a uh, uh, sport, but mainly individual sport. Uh, I wrestled in high school as a collegiate uh, wrestler. Uh, at the YMCA, I did judo. So I was involved in judo, uh, boxing, and collegiate wrestling for a year. And then later on, uh, what got me into the weightlifting was uh, uh, in high school, it was uh, they had different weight classes. So you had like a, a, one, a 155, 167, 185, and then anything over one nanny. In college, they had a one nanny, but they didn't have it in high school. So anything over 185, we call unlimited. So I wrestled unlimited because there was two guys in my school and both of us weighed one, in the 185 pan class. 
So the coach said, why don't one of you guys put on a couple of pounds, but we need somebody in the unlimited uh, category. Uh, category, which I'm glad I did because that was the weakest category. <laughs> but most of the guys that, that wrestle unlimited, they play football also. So, so they came after the football season, they came into the, and they did the wrestling as a sideline. The toughest class were the 155 and the 167. I, because I, then you had to wrestle. I say that all the time because you have more people at that weight class than anybody else. And you had to know how yes. to wrestle. So yes. most of the unlimited guys. And uh, what uh, what made me such a good wrestler, I always had this big upper about it. So the, I remember the guys used to always say, don't lock up with him. You know, I, so I never locked up. I was a leg wrestler. So what I would do, I would really, 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 you, you, they didn't expect that, the ultimate surprise. So I, I got real good at shoot. So they, they had a, if you see a wrestling match, they got a circle. So when the, when, when the referee said wrestle, I would shoot in low. And this guy, he expect me to come high. But I would shoot in low, and I would go for a whizzle or, or single leg or double leg takedown or, or, or something of that name. But it always used to surprise them that I would – that I was a leg wrestler, and being a leg wrestler helped me to win a, a lot of a lot of matches because it was the last thing they expect me to do. Because if they did, I remember the coach would tell them, "Well, don't lock up with them." Well, when they didn't know, I didn't lock up. So then when I I got wait, into I, I got to put just about to the, when you when you put the legs in, would you put it in when they're on all fours or when when you broke them down on the mat that did you slip the leg in? When when I had a I had a move that worked for me that was so easy. I would go in for a double leg uh, uh, takedown. The guy would with with, with, with with crater, and then uh, right away, I, I would hook one leg and roll him over and put him in a crash. Yeah, because he as soon as he moved his body, and then we and then was in roughly but roughly position. A lot of guys when they, when they set out, they left that arm back, and I would see that arm and I break that arm back. And, and, and put in oh. a half Nelson and roll them over. Ouch. So what I would do, a lot of times, I work for a mistake because a lot of guys they didn't practice constantly, and 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 I used to go and work out with the guys from the college, and most of what most kids did, and they probably still do it, uh, when wrestling practice was over, they start, and they didn't work out the off season. Yeah. So, so, th and I did. I, you know, I, I, I was like Tom. Uh, you know, early Tom Brady when it came to sport. Tom Brady never when it's the season is it, finished, but not Brady. You understand? Brady yeah, kept it, himself. It shows. It shows. Right, like Arnold physique. Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger kept himself in year round. So when wrestling season came, the first, uh, the the first two weeks of wrestling. You know, I was on top of it because I was staying in shape. Because I would go to the out to the cottage where the guys in wrestling wrestle with these guys. I would go down to the YMC and work out with the guys on the judo mat. So I I just constantly kept kept moving. So when the season came in, I didn't have to get in shape. Yeah. And by the time these Ladies guys got in shape, got in the best shape, the season was over. <laughs> because after the season, what more people do when the season ends? They go party. They stop. Yeah, they go party. One, and... one of the things that I'm sure that, that uh, when you were in the judo, the fact that in wrestling you can't grab a singer, but now you're in judo and you get to grab whatever you want. You grab the, the clothes, lapel, yeah. grab the sleeves, stuff like yeah. this. Of course, like going, you have all kinds of anchoring points. It's easy to grab, lift, and start to yeah. twist. But but it was it was a way to keep yeah. me in, in the wind, you know, to keep the, you know, to keep the, in the wrestling. You know, instead, to me, it was to combat. Yeah. You know, so I would even go to a judo class and, and, and just do the judo just so I could be, you know, get, never lose that ability. The physicality of it all. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that way, Keep it, it, it didn't become, everything become natural to you. And it build your instinct by doing that. You know, you go almost like, like, like when a guy would, when we shoot it, when we shoot on me, I, 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 I would cross face him. Um, uh, uh, I was a, a strong and false face him, and I had good speed because I had skinny legs. And then I spin around behind him. Watch out! Okay, a cross face is taking that bony ridge yeah. of that arm. That's right. Across the nose, right, right there. Across that. 
And then if you, if you were really skilled with it, it was almost like you were throwing a punch. It is. It is. That's right. And what happened, that that, that would daze the guy for a couple of minutes. By that time, I, I, I hooked that arm and grabbed that arm and, and just spin around on him. See? And keep your legs free. Don't let them tie your legs up. Once your legs tied up, it's like flatten the tires on the car. Mm -hmm. So if you want to keep your opponent for doing it, they, the first thing you do, you tie up his leg. And you can't wrestle on your back. When I broke into pro wrestling, one of the hardest thing for me to do was fall on my back. Because just by instinct, as I went back, I only made a turn. Because you can't wrestle on your back. My, yep. my high school coach used to sit and say, Tony, I don't even want you to sleep on your back. Sleep on your stomach. That's, yeah. That's the, that's the, that's well, that's how it works. Because everything, like in any, any combat, any combat thing is, you know, it's, uh, 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 it's instinct. Yep. You do something long enough, your, your body will react to it without, before you it's even natural. think about it. it so so once you nature. do something, uh, if you ever noticed what made Tom Brady, and Tom Brady, I'm not knocking, he's not the best athlete in the world, but he's oh. the best quarterback in the world. If you watch most players, if they make a play or make a test there, they start to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Brady don't. No, nope. but Brady celebrate at the end of the year. When he leave, when he make a play, he's like a laser beam. He's thinking about the next play. When he finish a game, he's thinking about the next game. And then when he do this the, at the Super Bowl, he pop the champagne and you see that smile come on his face. But you watch him going on the field, coming off it, he never loses his focus on the game. That's correct. See? That's correct. And another thing we used to uh, do that they used to teach me when I was young. Never think about what your opponent gonna do to you, only what you're gonna do to your opponent. Yep. So he got his game plan, but if he if he's concentrating on what I'm gonna do, he's not concentrating on what he's gonna do. You can't be in two places at once. So when I used to rest in that, I didn't think about the size of a person or I didn't think about his ability. I I, I started studying him and see what was his weakest link. What was the thing about him that that going to make this easier for me, to be honest with you? I didn't want to really, you know, go out there and get my butt whooped. So yeah. I, I would study him and, and see how he moved and everything. And by the way he moved would tell me what if, if, if he's an upper body wrestler or if he's a leg wrestler. It, it told me about pony. And most of the time, about 10, the referee say wrestler. I pretty much knew what the, what the other guy do. And another thing I, I would do too, I never socialize with my opponents. I leave that business. I see guys, we come in, everybody's talking about this and that, blah, blah, blah. They just socialize away with each other. And I would find a corner somewhere and I would just sit and I would get away from my opponent. I didn't want me within 10 feet of them. Well, now when I come on the mat, his man is going a thousand miles wild because he don't know he know nothing about me. He don't know what I do. He don't know what I think. So he's trying to figure me out. Yeah. And that, and that was something. It was, you know, being a good athlete is one thing, but there was a, a thing we called that you had to have some psychology uh, 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 to uh, 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 what you do. That's how come Ali was able to like uh, Bruce Lee. He would make you throw a punch, and he would beat up that arm coming back. Yeah, everything. Not everything. So you stick your arm out there. He hit that arm about five or six times before you pull it back. Now you're thinking, should I? Do I want to throw another punch? <laughs> exactly. If you throw a kick, he wouldn't block the kick. He would hit it. Yeah. That's he would so hit that. Hit your leg. Yeah. So now you get you get the hit. After a while, you know, say, wait a minute. If I throw a kick, he's gonna hit it. If I throw a punch, he's gonna hit it. He would hit when I'm come at him, and with most, and most, most of martial arts, they throw blocks. He never blocked. Yeah, you don't know that. No. He never blocked nothing. He no. attacked whatever no. you put in front of him. You throw a fist, he attacked that arm. You know, it's like a like a pit bull where you stick your arm in a pit bull. Yeah. When I'm come at him, he what he bites right. Yep. That was Bruce Lee was like a pet bull. He he bite when I'm coming his way. Wow. And now I, the yeah. guy's a little bit. Who was it used to do this? I, I don't know the name of him. What, 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 Bacciano. Okay, Rocky Bacciano. Okay, Rocky. He beat up your arms. Yeah. He hit you on the hit you on the arm. He yeah. go in, boom, boom, on the arm. Now you like your arm. And that what were you gonna use to fight with? Your arm. Yep. He destroy your weapons first. In other words, what he do if he had a gun, he take all the bullets out the gun. 
Yeah, you can't use it then. It's useless. <laughs> no more bullets. Nope. He unloaded well, you. He's well, gonna what, hit take away your ammunition. But yeah, if Don, you don't Don did that. Jerry Joe oh. Walcott would do that too. He go in and hit you on the arm. He's not trying. He he wasn't a headhunter. Yeah. You know he beat he beat your arm. Now you got no. The power is not there. You got nothing to defend you. You're not gonna block with a sore arm. Nope. Nope. Yeah. You don't even want to hit with that arm. It's sore. Yeah. Yeah, Don Don would do the same thing. Anytime somebody would clinch him, he would hit. He would just hit the ribs as hard as he could. The body shot, body oh, shot. Oh yeah, them kidney shot on the ground. Anytime someone got close, he just as hard as you. Oh could, yeah, hit you with them kidney shot. Yeah. Then you fighting and you got to pee at the same time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y'all, you you ain't talking about that fight no more. You thinking where's the bathroom? <laughs> yep. Yeah, it works. No one. Oh yeah. Want, yeah. And then you don't well, want to. You know, we sitting here talking about. Fighting and everything, but uh, well, well get, get back to, to actually the sports aspect of wrestling. You said that you wrestled at heavyweight. No, yeah, okay. unlimited. They call it unlimited. unlimited. Yeah, what would would be one of the biggest people you ever wrestled because there was no ceiling on no weight no no. You, you can have yeah you could tonight you you could wrestle a guy at two hundred pound next night a guy at one ninety a next guy night you got a guy at three hundred yes you know so there was no it was it was called unlimited weight. You know, like Chris Chris Taylor was, I think, like the closest they could ever guesstimate his weight. American wrestler Chris Taylor in the 1972 Olympic, the closest they could guesstimate was 450 pounds because they had to yeah. take it to a slaughterhouse. Yeah. Because weight scales back then did not go up to 300 pounds. No. Okay. No. So they actually took the slaughterhouse to where they actually hung on the meat. Yeah. Truck. Yeah. Well, I would tell you, you know, uh, something got nothing to do with. Uh, uh, wrestling, yeah. it got something to do with that flag behind you there. Yes, we're we're, we're big about that. Well, when I was uh, let me see how I want to put this. My first year in wrestling, my first year in wrestling. Yes, a lot of people come and heck the wrestlers, but just back in the seventies, you could do that in the seventies. But like I said before, political wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. So a guy was calling me all kind of, oh, you phony wrestler, you big old faker, you nothing but a big phony. So finally, I had enough of it. I said, I'll tell you what, you get into the ring and, and I'll show you what I got. Well, in order to get in the ring, the first thing you got to do, you got to stick your head through the rope. Yep. Well, as soon as he did that, I felt face lock him. Took him down, rubbed his nose in the mat a little bit. People realize that. that yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, canvas mat. That, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that, you know, like a little bit of sandpaper. And then I made him I made him say Unka. Then I let him go. An old timer by the name of Johnny Heidemer from Canada came running down to the rink at that time. He said, You dumb piece of I can't say things, right? right. Oh no, we'll talk to you back. You can say whatever you want. Okay. He said, You dumb piece of dumb piece of shit, you you just fucked it up for all of us. I said, What do you mean? He said, most people think, most people think that if they got in the ring with a pro wrestler, that they would get hurt. He said, You built like a Greek god. That guy got in the ring with you. He got humiliated. But you didn't hurt him. He said, not only will he come back next week, he will bring a friend. And I, he said, get your stupid butt over here. Let me show you how he dumb. So he tell the guy, hey, you want to try me? So Johnny Heidemann was not a big muscle guy or nothing like that. So he figured he could do it. Johnny took him down, broke his wrist. Oof. Broke his wrist. He said, now that's how you freaking do it when they get in the ring. We get by the dressing room, and they say, "Whenever a guy get in the ring with you, you gotta hurt him, or they they will come back." But it now they know they don't, they won't get hurt. They, they jump in every night. Uh, I what the promoter did, they well, it was fake. What they did, they say you suspended. So Johnny Heidemann was suspended for that town, not for the rest, just that town. Which didn't matter anyway. And you know, they did that to make things look good. Then they called, they told the guy, we would take care of your bill and you could come to all the wrestling shows in the future for free. One show he didn't show up. They went and got him. But they wanted him to walk around. People say, Hey, what happened to y'all? Oh, I got to bring one of them wrestlers. Yeah. Protection. 
I say this to say this. When we went to war in Iraq, we went in like Tony Atlet. Yeah. You understand? Yep. We didn't hurt them. Not yeah. only did they come back, they brought a friend. Mm -hmm. So I say that because we have brave men and women that go and fight for this country with their hands tied. Yeah. So if you're gonna go in, if you're gonna fight, you gotta fight. Yep. You have to let the military fight and get the politicians out of it. Right now, the highest crime rate in America is black on black crime. Yep. The highest crime rate in America is yep. black on black crime. What they did, they want to defund the police and they want to pull the tooth from the tagger, and then they tell the tagger, go and eat that steak. Yep. And now the policemen, they're afraid to do their job because then they're gonna get claim it being racist or being this or being that. So because of that, the criminals are running them up. When you look at TBC, why do you guys run in and out all the time? They run in and out all the time because we have did the same thing to our police department that we did to the military years and years ago. I had a brother that was in Vietnam. He shot a child. The yeah. child blew up. Yep. They would come up to the camp. When he was in Vietnam, they asked for chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Yeah. So the GI would reach in to give him a piece of chocolate, and the kid would blow up. Yeah. But what they would tell they would tell the, the the kid, the family, the kid, if you do this for us, we will take care of your family forever. Yeah, you, you, you sacrifice this one child, we'll take care of you. And exactly, and that was they, that that was their mentality. So yeah. the GI caught on to it. So they have a, a perimeter that the kids couldn't cross. They still gave them chocolate, they still were nicer, but they couldn't. But what did we do to them soldiers when they came home? We spit on them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We have terrorists. Literally that was taking a dub machete and chopping off the head of our American citizen. Mm -hmm. Then we're going to prosecute soldiers for pouring water up somebody knows. Yeah. And we did this in public. Yep. So you take these guys that is fighting us, they say, oh, don't worry about the Americans. They, they government would not let them fight. Yeah. It's you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I learned that lesson from wrestling. See, with people, they always thought if you mess with America, you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. They mess with us. Did they get it? Nope, not that time. No, they didn't. Nope. See? And so if you're going to go into a battle, no matter if it's with the police department, no matter if with uh, wrestling, judo, you got to let people do their thing. Mm -hmm. We got to let our soldiers do what they think. We got to let our policemen do they, their thing. Yep. Now, there may be some mistakes made along the way, but what the old saying, the means outweigh the... The advantages? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, in the long run, we'd be glad we did it. Yeah. It need, if, if it's done the right way. But, yeah, yeah. You, they need to... Yeah, we need You're to... You're going in to win. We, yeah. You know, you can't, you can't fight and bake cookies like Obama did uh, for your enemy. No. I mean, you bake cookies, you know, put some nails on, on broken <laughs> glass, and <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're gonna beat me up. Everybody, nobody gonna. Fight. But that is how I feel about about no. my country. That we gotta let our soldiers do their job. We gotta let our policemen do their take, job. Yep. Let's you take you see what I'm saying? Well, we can't send our soldiers in harm way and not give them full advantage because in in Iraq war, the only people that went by the Geneva Convention were the American soldiers. Yep. The Taliban ain't going by no convention. Exactly. Oh, hell no. So, yeah, you have to fight people on their own. You know, if, if I got a knife and you got a gun, yeah. and then my my boss said, Tony, you can't use a gun. Why not? He got a gun. Wait, 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 we go by different standards. What's that? What would we mean different standards? You get him to drop his gun and get a knife. Then I mean, did I would get, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's, so, I just wanted to say that. No, no, I, I just 100% agree with you. Yeah, because it, it's all about, we talk about combat, but the people that is in the most compact, the most difficult combat, are our first responders and, and our soldiers. Yeah. You know, and when I was in combat, and, and when you was in combat, you had the same advantage as your opponent. Mm -hmm. Policemen don't have that. No. Soldiers don't have that. Nope. That's why I said what I'm going to say got something to do with that flag. If we want to keep that flag flag, then we're going to have to let let our soldiers do their job 
And yeah. we're not going to have to let our police do their job. I live in the state of Maine. And we never had drive-by shootings or, or anything. We get a, we get one every week now. Yeah, it's insane. Because the cops can't they don't do, do anything. They can't do because anything about it. Yeah, because most of the people that do it are black. So if the cops really go in and clean up the neighborhood, they're going to be called racist. They're going to get sued. They're going to lose their job. No. So they let it go. Yeah, the, well, the numbers the numbers don't lie. Like you said, it's out. I mean, it's this, it, there's a reason. But also, I mean... It needs to be a crackdown on everybody. Everything yeah. is a clean house. It's not just, you know, there's there's bad people of every race. Oh, yes. You know, and it's, oh, yeah. You well, know, you have to let <clears throat> authority take care of the bad people. Yeah, 100%. You, 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 can't, you can't tie the hands. Nope, nope. Wait, let, me, let me ask you this question right now, because it is something I've, I've talked about a few times on the Toxic Masculinity podcast there, is that, okay, if someone, if someone has been uh, proved guilty of a crime, Let's, let's say, and, and and that person receives the death penalty. Why in America do we allow that person to live for the next 20, 30 years incarcerated at the expense of the taxpayer dollars? And that inmate has better dental, optical, and health benefits than what you or I have to pay for. To me, I just look at, if you go to prison, and especially if you go to prison and you've been sentenced to death, let's do it next week. I agree. Now, now, now you set a precedent that a precedent said. I'm good. How are you? Can I try to hide him up? Yeah. That's, that's, that's right. Well, that's how it was. It was like that. It was like that for many, many years. I like watching Gunsmoke and all that. No, I love these Western. Once you get something to hang, they hung you. Yeah. They're going to keep yeah. you hanging around. You're guilty. You know, these guys now, and, and people know that. They can repeal, repeal, so, repeal. Yeah, repeal. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, the criminals yeah. got more rights than the victim. Yeah. The victim had no rights. There's no rights for the victim. That family going to suffer as long as that guy is breathing air. And then by some get the right lawyer or, or whatever, he could be out. Yeah. I remember the first time I experienced that, I was going to fight a guy. They call him Blue. And they called him blue because he was real dark. He was like as black as your shirt. So we say he was so black, he blew black. So they called him blue. So I was going to fight him in the schoolyard one day. And they said, oh, don't fight him, Tony. He just killed two people. I said, what the hell are he doing out here? And what they do, he went to jail. After three years, you go for parole. And if you don't do nothing in the parole, he probably got 25 years. But he, he pulled like seven years. Uh, out of a 25 year sentence, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, and so I, I have seen that years and years. We don't, we don't carry out, uh, I know that's what that's that's right, right, right. Crazy right. Empty it's, threats. Uh, Empty I'm just thinking about this. Okay, once you've committed this heinous crime and and you've been given that death sentence, that's right, just kill him, just take him. Kill him. Oh, okay, but okay, now again, this has been one of my wacky ideas. Let's have the ultimate cage match because you 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 heard of Thunderdome way yeah. back when those were yeah. matches to the death. So yeah. if you have these two inmates that the, okay, this guy's got a life sentence over here. This one got a life sentence over here. Why don't we just do a pay per view match where we allow them? Don't give them more weapons. Let them go out there and like Leo Gladiators where we let them fight yeah. to, the, to the death to see one kills the other. It's pay per view. Yeah. Okay, the pay per view, but. 75% of, of the pay-per-view money that comes in goes to the family that yeah, that's got harmed. That's right, that's right. Now that other, that last percentage goes to now the prison to maintain the upkeeping of, of lights, electricity, that's right, food. That's right, that's right. I don't think taxpayers should be paying for any of this stuff. Well, well like, I, like I said, I love my Western. It, it never dawned on people that watch like Gunsmoke or one of them people. How can one person kept a whole town in order? One person kept the whole town in order. The reason was because you said they have quick something. The judge say you're going to hang. Matt Dillon say I'm taking you to Hayes City. You 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 gonna hang next week? Yeah, you usually within a week or two. So that, like you said, that set a precedent. Just like when I jump in the ring with that with that with that guy, and I let that guy walk out of the ring without hurting him, 
and Johnny Weaver and 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 uh, Johnny Heidemar show me the way to keep people from jumping in that ring. Well, when a person know he got a chance of 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 of, 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 of uh, not being fully punished, not only he gonna do it again, he gonna bring a friend. Yeah, okay. Yep. You like they're gonna bring you, a friend. You like the yep. Western so much. Like, it's so true. From a Western uh, perspective, if you had some some men that were trying to rustle your cattle, you could you take care of them. Took them, you hung them in the tree right there, and there because you want yeah. them as an example. Right. Right? Are you gonna cut them down? No, because you want the vultures every, to chew on them or whatever. Every every America got the right to defend themselves and their property and their property. Every America got the right to defend themselves. And they probably, and that's how it was for many, many, many of years. Over 300 years, we was like that. And crime was not nearly as bad as what it is now. The reason crime is so bad now, because the criminals uh, got more rights than the victim. Yep. And when, once you reverse that uh, uh, scenario, criminals have no fear of the law. They have no fear of justice. I watched on TV the other day, people run into a store and just take everything out of the store and run out. Yep. But they're not worrying about mm-hmm. anybody doing nothing to them. You can't do anything about it. And then you know? if, if, the, if the store clerk tries to do something about it, they get in trouble. For, and you get in trouble. Yeah, for assaulting someone that tried to rob you. It's yeah. Like, how well, does well, that Tony, have, you ever, have you ever thought about like, running for any kind of political office or something? Oh, like I that? got too much dirt in my bag. Oh. <laughs> By the time they get through some all the bad thing I did, the election yeah, will be over. Yeah, but, yeah, but okay, you'd be you'd be one of the more colorful individuals to talk about, but but the aspect is that it all boils down to the message that you deliver. Yeah, because yeah. we have we have too many politicians that uh they promise all kinds of stuff, but what what do they ever come through with? Well, see, the, what what the uh, look. money? They all get money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Money. Well, it, it's it's all it's all he's right. It's all about the money. Yeah. You know, and, and 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 I know I'm gonna get in trouble for saying this. That's why neither side, Republican or Democrat, liked their Trump. They couldn't buy him. No, nope. he wasn't for sale. He had uh-huh. his own companies. He's he didn't not, need the money. Yeah. He's not part he of it. He did it because, and I used to travel with her and talk to him on occasion. He did it because he knew that we need to get to be respected around the world. Because he traveled to these different countries and he listened to what they say about us. So he didn't like us. So he said, Well, we need to change that. We we gotta make people look at us the way they used to look at us before. Because now they're looking at us. Because why would they attack us and do what they do to us? They won't have that fear no more. Oh, there's no respect. They don't have. They there's don't no have respect. a fear of us. Yeah. They don't have a fear of us doing anything because we just we. Uh, I don't know why. I mean, I'm, I'm not in the government. I don't know why they do things the way they do, but we are losing respect around the world. It used to be a, a time with nobody thinking about doing nothing to this country. No, nope. they wouldn't even. I mean, the thought wouldn't even enter the enter the man. Let you watch Matt Dillon. I watched him the other night. Matt Dillon said, "Why don't you fight me?" The guy said, "I ain't that damn drunk." <laughs> you know, because he knew Matt Dillon was gonna blow his butt away. He yep. knew that. And then you see a, another law man where they 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 would run all over him because they know he ain't gonna do nothing. You yep. see, the reason people do things the way they do because they know ain't nothing gonna gonna be done to them. See, so we got to get back to the, the way we were. Kids got to learn how to respect their parents, respect yep. uh, authority. And then when you do something wrong, you, like Vince McMahon, I, I hate to say this, when he fired me, what he told me, he said, I have to make an example out of you. Sure enough, when he fired me, everybody else straightened up. Oh, yeah, sir. Sir. That, because he had to fire a top guy to make it mean something. He could tie, you know, a guy underneath all he wants. It don't, it don't, it don't matter. It, 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 it don't matter. But when you see a star, when you see a top guy that's making a company money, and and you you let that guy go, then you know the rest of the guys say, well, you want to keep your job. We're going to straighten. Up. And he straightened up, and he went from being a millionaire to a billionaire. Yep. And they could have got there earlier, but they allowed the wrestlers to hold them back. Guys would do things, cost the company lots and lots of money, and they got it skewed. And so yeah. the company, Vince, almost lost the company. So Vince said, I can't let these guys kill my kill my business for me. So he tightened up on them. And once he tightened up, everything went good for him. Yeah. 
So I figure if we want to keep that flag flying, we're going to have to start supporting those that fight for this country. Yep. And yep. don't just support them when they're at war. Support them when they come home, too. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, give them jobs. Sense. Give them training. Give them help yeah, to get hard. back in, into society, you know? And respect the policeman. You got bad policemen. You got good policemen. But they don't give you no excuse to do disrespect the authority he carried. Nope. I say this about every one of these shooters I saw. If they have not resisted, they be on the earth today. Exactly. That yeah. policeman got to go home. He's not going to take a chance on you pulling out a gun or pulling out a knife and do something to him. You get in the car, go down to the station, get booked, and leave. Mm -hmm. But why fight him? Yeah. You you make you you make it a, a bad situation worse. Yeah. And every one of I saw, I said that guy could have went home the next morning. Yep. They put him in jail. What overnight? The next morning, yeah, we'll let you pay his bond. He's gone. That's it. Yep. But then you 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 push a guy. You're not gonna let me break into your house and do nothing to your family. No. You're not gonna do that. No. no. Nope. So if I'm gonna if I don't want to get blown into a swivel ring. Don't break into your house. But if I know I could break into your house and you're going to say, now, now, Tony, don't you do that. Bad boy, bad boy. I'm coming back tomorrow night. Exactly. Yep. And the next day after And the next, next day after that. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to bring a friend. You lose, you lose yeah. fear. Exactly. I'm bring but I learned all this stuff from wrestling. I, I know it, it politics and wrestling, but it, it's similar because you're in competition. And right now, we I'll, we're in competition with the rest of the world for a thing they call survivor. Yeah. You should feel safe in your own home. Yeah. You should feel safe in your own country. And once you lose that safety net, you don't have a country. You don't have a home. What do you to have a, a, a house and you can't leave it for somebody that's afraid somebody's going to break into it? You can't go to a, a, a store unless you worry about somebody shooting you. Yep. Or robbing your store. You open up a business. You got to worry about, look at what they were doing all that marching, that Black Lives Matter stuff. Burning down these people's businesses. These people have worked their whole life to build a business. And, and in one night, it burnt to the ground. Yep. For what? For everything, yeah. For what? That guy that, that owned that business did nothing to you. He didn't, he didn't shoot nobody. He didn't beat up nobody. He didn't arrest. He didn't do nothing. He didn't try to run a business. So how come this man got to suffer for doing nothing but trying to open up a business? And the people that did it never got, never got, uh, yeah, nothing, no, no consequences. Nothing. That's, nothing. A, that, that's, that's the biggest problem. There's no consequences. Like, yeah, what do you think? What, what, what do you think would happen? What do you think would happen if, you know, if people go in, try to steal something and they get shot? What do you think it's gonna what do you think the next person's gonna think? They're gonna think they get a lawyer, the lawyer get them a, a plea deal, and then back no, on the street. No, but I'm just do saying, it again. I'm just saying if if this was a this is what happens. If you steal, you get shot and you're dead. People yeah. people will be like, Oh well shit, maybe I shouldn't be freaking stealing, you know, but there's no consequences for anybody's anything that that's you, right. You know? Where it go that's why I told that story first about me and Johnny Heidemann. Nobody ever jump in the ring of that town again. Yep. Because nobody wanted a broken arm. Yep. Yeah. And you you know, know, that's what you don't see that. I mean, in, you go to Mexico. Yeah, there's crime in Mexico, but yeah. you don't see that stuff in Mexico because what happens to you if you do that there? You, oh. <laughs> you never, you're done. done. You never, you done. Know, you, they know, and so they know you're better. You're done. Yeah. And you know, mm -hmm. Canada got more guns than America do. Yeah, but yes, really? yeah, but 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 well, Canada don't mess around. Yep. The, the laws he's, they he's don't right. mess around like we do. I mean, you do something. They I was with a wrestler one time. He was speeding, and because he had an out of town uh, uh, license, they took his license to make sure he come back for the hearing. Yeah. <laughs> they don't mess around. No, right? no, I, I get, I did that. They they, they do not mess around. No, if, if outside of the United States, you commit a crime, you're done. But they don't mess around. But we at, mess around. Look what they did. Look what they did with that Brittany Griner girl. You know, for yeah. she she got caught with uh what THC. And we yeah. and we had to give up a freaking terrorist to get her back. Like they yeah. know what they were doing. They don't mess around. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, it wasn't an accident. <laughs> yeah, here they would have threw it in the trash and let her go. Yeah. 
It, but she would have bought a kilo. She would have had a happened. kilo next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. She would have had a kilo this following week. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's, it's See, yeah. The law, when you go to these other outside of the United States, the, where you travel, no, no, I, I, no, the, I law, agree. The, the law is the law. Well, gentlemen, I really enjoy talking oh, yeah. to y'all, but I, I know they're going to get mad at me. I'm going to get yeah. back. <laughs> no, uh, we appreciate it. Thank you so, so much, media. One more time, people want to get in contact with your family. Yeah. Huh? Plug your, your social media one more time before you leave in case someone wants to follow you or get in, co in contact with you. Well, uh, I, I'm not all that into the media uh, uh, that much. I, I, you know, I kind of uh, I wish I were because I know it's a new thing. But if there's nothing else that you all know about me, all remember that Tony Atlas, stand for the flag and kneel for God. Amen. That's me. Stand for the flag and yeah. kneel for God. And love your country and love love your neighbor. And regardless of who win the election, support the president while he's in office. And then if you don't like him, just don't vote for him next time around. But yeah. always support or support and support your local police department. And most definitely, most definitely support uh our military. Yes. And let them fight. Turn them loose. You Why go. you have a, a, a pit bull and then you go pull his teeth? Let him bite him. Take, bite the, cuffs, bite, 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 take the cuffs off. That's what we're there for. <laughs> right there. No, no. Let, I, him, let him beat their ass up. Yep. I, God I, bless you I, and God bless America. I, I, I want Tony Allison to run for president here right now. No, no, no. Thank, <laughs> off thank you, Tony. Hey, you're more than welcome, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like subscribe and share or I'm going to come to your house.